galactic sentient broadcast. Target, planet Earth. Begin invasion in three, two, one. Greetings, invaders. My name is Scott. Thanks for joining me. This is Book Invasion. If you'd like some sci-fi content and sci-fi book reviews, make sure you click subscribe down below. Thanks for watching, everybody. Today, we're going to be talking about Stormblood by Jeremy Zell. This is a debut novel from this Australian author who has quite uh, a resume behind him. Uh, let's talk about that for a second. Uh, Jeremy Zell was born in 1995 in the outback of Australia. His science fiction has appeared in Nature, Abyss and Apex, Lightspeed, Strange Horizons, Tor.com, The Drabblecast, and multiple anthologies. He's the fiction editor for Hugo-winning podcast Starship Sofa, where he has worked as an audio producer with George R. R. Martin, William Gibson, Harlan Ellison, and others. He holds a rather useless BA in film studies and creative writing from the University of New South Wales. He carves out a living in Sydney, Australia, where he drinks too much gin, watches too many weird films, and makes too many dark jokes. Sounds like my kind of guy. His debut novel, Stormblood, a character-driven space opera, is the first in a trilogy known as the Common, the Common Trilogy. Find him at, at Jeremy Zoll or jeremyzoll.com. So what is Stormblood? Let's see what the author has to say about it in a quick blurb. Stormblood is a space opera noir adventure that combines the rain-soaked cynicism of Blade Runner, the galaxy-spanning exuberance of an aliens of Mass Effect 2, the character-driven pacing of Pierce Brown's Red Rising series, the furious combat of Joe Abercrombie, and the space gothic weirdness of Alistair Reynolds. Now, reading the book, he is not wrong. He's not wrong. This book has a very cool cyberpunky slash action-packed slash brutal slash weird-esque alien things. So if you're interested in any of those pieces, which I am, then check out Stormblood. It's a very good debut novel from this author and it's not a, not a thing to shake a stick at it's not cheesy or or repetitive it's got a lot of pieces and, and the book deals a lot about like drug addiction but drug addiction in, in a different way where there's this post-war future so the plot takes place on in a asteroid city known as compass uh, which has these skyscraper buildings. You kind of get a, uh, a feel in the, in the book. It describes like the lower levels of the buildings are for the poor people and the lower class and the upper levels are for the rich and high class people. There's a series of like uh, underground tunnels for shipping things in this asteroid city. Um, and it just seems really Blade Runner-esque, dark and, and a little bit dingy. There's uh, drug addicts tweaking out on the, on the side of the street and things like that. But the main character here, Vakov Fukasawa, is a Reaper from the Reaper War, engineered as a, quote, super soldier um, by this place known as Harmony. And they, you get throughout the story and throughout this tale flashbacks from Vak's, Vak, Vak's perspective um, about his time during the war. But the present tense of the book is is after that war has happened, and now these soldiers who are kind of hyped up on this crazy, like mega steroid drug, aren't needed for the war anymore, and they're kind of you know they're assimilating back into society. They kind of get a bad rap and dirty looks um, because you can see like the luminescent blue stuff running through their veins, and so you can kind of tell. And now this this compound, this chemical, is being sold on the streets and slung around. To drug addicts and things like that. So there's a lot of this underground drug smuggling circle going on in this futuristic society. And Vakov, who is a who is a Reaper, Reapers are these super soldiers now. Reaper, get it? His brother is caught up on the wrong side of this drug syndicate war. So he finds out his brother's involved in, with the bad guys. And that's kind of the opening piece of this book. So what happens is it takes you through... Um, Back off, who's kind of this hardened war badass guy but what what was really surprising about the book was that he he's not alone he's not depressed he's not just a, a guy who's just out to smash skulls um, the way that he interacts with the relationship he has with his brother the relationship he has with his his buddy Grimm Grimm is kind of his live-in tech guy and so he, he and Grimm have kind of this relationship where Vakov's taking care of his housing 
things like that. And so there's there's a bit of a heart down, deep down in this, which which adds kind of a little bit to the character development of Vakov instead of just being uh, you know an ex soldier who gets recruited by somebody to solve some drug intergalactic drug. He has people with him that he cares about, and he, those relationships kind of grow throughout the book. Um, Catherine Kowalski is is kind of his agent throughout this mission and you kind of see that relationship grow uh, when he flashes back into his time in the war and the battle you see who he was at that time and how he how he feels regret over some of his actions um, and things like that so there's a bit of that emotional growth through these characters that really kind of connects with you a little bit more than just saying you know he's a guy out for revenge and just duh, 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 everybody dies um, there's there's more to it than that and and it's spun in a way where it's done fluidly and smooth not just to um, piece by piece throughout the book not just an abrupt like he's mean now but then he just sees somebody and he's now he's a nice guy um, you kind of feel that that depth to the character which I thought really made the book shine a little bit more And in the first part of the book, the other the other thing I thought interesting is that Vakov being this Reaper character, he there's a character in the book that he has to go up against known as the Jackal, Red Rising Nod. So there's a be, there's a lot of action of this uh, that that does feel like you know Red Rising esque. There's there's spaceships they have to shoot shoot out of like the uh, Iron Rain, kind of so to speak. You shoot out of a cylindrical cannon down to these places again. And yeah, it could be like um, Mass Effect and Richard Morgan, things like that. All of those pieces are in play here. For a debut book, I thought it was really great. I was provided the audio copy of this book from Galance. Now, Colin Mace is the narrator of this book, and his, his narration of the book was phenomenal. Um, I really loved the way that he pulled it off, and uh, kind of his British accent uh, pieces of this was, was really well done. But thank you to Glance for, for letting me have an audio copy of this to review. So overall, I really love the book. I thought it was fantastic. I'll give it uh, those four and a half stars out of five. There were lots of twists and turns about where the, the origins of the Stormblood came from, and that's kind of what this book kind of gets to the bottom of, is, is why is this happening? Who's engineering it? Who's using it for what? Uh, is it good? Should it be banned or should it not be? But Stormblood really is something kind of bigger than that even. And then Vakov's, uh, you know, past kind of comes up to haunt him and, and get him back uh, when he's going through these flashbacks about how he became this, quote, super soldier. Um, those things come into play down further down the road. There's there's a lot of betrayals, family dynamics. There's a little bit of just a crush that, that Vakov has um, that kind of sways his intentions a little bit. There's kind of a smart alleginess to Vakov because he's just so much of a, you know, I don't really care what happens to me. Uh, I'm going to try my hardest to get out of this situation. But look, I'm not going to show you that I'm scared or, or show any type of fear to you. I'm going to be that smart allocate guy under pressure and not crack. And, you know, we always appreciate a good hero, right? But he doesn't want to be a hero. He doesn't want to play for these guys. He wants to play by his own rules. And so that really adds a bit of a conflict to it as well. Anyway, Stormblood was really great. I think I've said that five times now. But uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Be sure to like and subscribe. Go check out Stormblood by Jeremy Zoll. Out now. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.